Let's kick off this week's show here. Caring for cattle is challenging enough. You know that on its own, but with cold weather on the way, grazing operations face a whole new set of unique challenges. To that point, Market Journal's Bill Dodd is standing by with the details of this story. Bill? Winter weather is beginning to bear down on producers in the Midwest. Colder temperatures and snow-covered pastures are becoming less accommodating for livestock by the day. On the bright side, there are a plethora of management practices that can go a long way in helping your herd maintain their health and productivity during these cold days. The first thing you need to concern yourself with are the bare necessities. The three main necessities of any grazing operation hinge on water, fencing, and feed. And of course, the need for feed will vary from one operation to another. Uh, later in the winter and the fall, we'll go back to corn stalks or some other after grass, things like that. And now there's going to be more, you know, they'll have to be purchasing their feed for the winter uh, and that kind of stuff. And, but then there's also now there's, uh, we're using more forages uh, into the interceding into the crop ground. Uh, so when the corn's out, they can come in with some turnips and radishes, things like that. Uh, we also have some that we just planted straight crop without going into it, uh, corn stubble and stuff like that. So that's kind of some of our fall feeding. Uh, everyone is a little different on their operation on how they do it with the beef cattle. You know, when you have purebred cattle compared to commercial cows, you know, there's a little different scenario sometimes on their operations and stuff. Another aspect to consider is water. This is without a doubt the most essential aspect to take into consideration. Low temperatures can have a negative effect on many water delivery methods. However, while having free flowing water would be good, being able to deliver warm water is even better. You know, the ideal is that they always do better and convert better if you got warm water. Uh, a lot of times we're on ponds. In the old days, you had to chop ice and stuff. Uh, some places we have free flowing wells, like in the sand hills, so that's handy. We have a free flowing well on our place that it's never stopped for 56 years since it was put in. Just a couple times when in the summer with the pivots now and stuff like that, and that's along the Cedar River but uh, they, they're kind of handy when you don't have to chop ice and stuff, but there's, there's newer machines, you know, newer tanks and stuff like that with heated water and stuff like that. So water is a big important item, you know, for livestock. When it comes to keeping the herd contained, there are a number of fencing options at your disposal. Again, this is one aspect that you'll want to have tailored to your specific needs. Well, there's a couple things that you might want to be thinking, you know, these will be temporary fences. Usually that'll be going on your other uh, crop ground and stuff. Like with the CRPs, you know, there's a lot of fences and a lot of water systems that aren't used anymore, especially up in the sand hills where there was a lot of uh, irrigated corn that was, bro you know, the grass was broke up years back and now there's back to CRP. So some of that inner structure stuff's not there as easy. So you gotta be looking at different fences, uh, different types of things like that, uh, of what to be using, you know, for it. You know, nowadays, you know, the fences, electric fences are a lot better, more powerful. Uh, you got high tensile fencing, you got uh, pivot fences, you know, you can go up through and make a, uh, your pivot with electric fence on it so you can move it for your, you know, grazing systems, uh, if that works for you. There's different op you know, different options and stuff like that. So, so that fencing the water is a big thing when we're trying to move cattle. All of these considerations are for naught, however, if you have nowhere to feed your herd. When it comes to leasing ground and care of livestock, it's highly recommended to hammer out all details of any lease agreement in writing. You know, so it's better to have it done writ written down, you know, for both sides of the parties to understand exactly who's responsible for what. Uh, from the prices to when they got to leave, who controls, you know, if they have to feed extras. You know, there's all kinds of questions that could be done ahead of time. You know, renting land, if it's pasture, or corn ground, or about anything, you know, but especially with livestock, you're looking at the length of time of grazing that's available for you, you know, especially going into the winter, the stocking rate that you can use on your uh, acres, uh, the fences naturally, uh, water quality and the amount of corn left in the field. So that's a big thing right now. Some, you know, nowadays there's a lot better machines. You know, they don't leave as much corn on the ground. We have a good uh, program they, uh, through the extension office is 
one of the tools is corn stock grazing calculator. So it works where you can put your yields down and then it kind of helps you and your amount of cattle and it tells you how many days you can be on that field and stuff. You know, nowadays you always hear how poor the quality of the stocks are for cattle. Really, we don't want to be feeding, eating the stocks themselves anyway. They should be moved before then, you know, on that type of thing, so. Fluctuating hot and cold temperatures can have a drastic impact on any animal, so it's best to get ahead of the cold weather before it sets in for the long haul. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.